Now that we've got our dialogue channels nice and clean, it's time to add some colour to our mix. Almost every podcast deserves some music, so let's take a look at how best to place our chosen track throughout, as well as adding in some cool transition sound effects to add dynamic, interest and a tone of voice to our podcast. Now we've already got our music track here in our session, but let's assume that we want to add something new. So Apple Shift I to import, and let's select our second track here. Remembering what we said earlier about adding and copying in session, so let's copy this just to make sure they've got a copy in our original project folder, and we'll select done. That'll tell you where it's going to save it. And then we can select either new track or clip list. So let's select new track, and we're going to have this as our intro music from the very start. So let's select session start. You can also select selection, which if you have your cursor placed somewhere on the timeline, it'll place the music exactly in that spot. And alternatively, we can select spot where we will then be able to say, I want it at two minutes, I want it at four minutes, 30, etc. But let's select session start. And now we've got two music tracks here. And just to make sure that they're both clearly within our music section, I'm going to double click on the track and change the color to yellow. And then this is our original music track, which is muted at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and make that inactive which just means that it's there in the session, but there's no chance of it being played accidentally by unmuting or muting the track. In fact, I might even go ahead and hide that. So I'll right click on the track and select hide. And now let's just go to our mix window, check our outputs, and let's change that to music group. And as you see that on now, anything that's in this group will be able to be controlled by this main fader here. Let's play that back a second. Tom, you are heading up our creative playlist. From the start, that's way too loud. So let's open up our mix window. Play again. Tom, you are heading up our creative play lab. What's your team's role in innovating Lego play? Thanks, Lauren. That's a great question. Fundamentally, it is my team's job. Cool. So that feels a little bit better. And let's say, actually, as soon as our first speaker stops talking, we want to finish that track. So what we'll do is we'll just drag this open a little bit. We'll zoom in a bit into the track and we'll select around here. And we'll just delete this. So then we'll create a fade, Apple F. I always like to use exponential fades. They just feel way more musical rather than that really awkward drop off that you find with a very linear fade. So I'll make sure that's selected and click OK. And let's play that back here. Creating Lego play. Thanks, Lauren. That's a great question. Fundamentally, it is my team's job to. Cool. So let's now say that we want to use that exact clip and want to use that at the back end of it. So we'll select our track. Apple C to copy, we'll move across to the end of our sequence and we'll select exactly where we want that to start. So let's say it's around here, for example. Apple V to paste it and we'll play that back. Really hope for, uh, and that's, that would be the big success. For me. We'll be rooting for it. Thank you. Thank you. Now all of our music tracks are going through the music group and what's good about having everything bust and correctly set up like this is we can individually control the volume on this track if we select volume. But also using buses like this, we can make sure any music tracks whatsoever in that bus can be affected in exactly the same way. So let's say as soon as that dialogue finishes around here, we want our music to start getting a little bit louder. So we'll press Apple 4 and we'll press it again at the end of the dialogue and add, say, 2 or 3 dB. Now, you can see here by clicking on the keyframe on the track, it says minus 29 dB. If we click on the second keyframe, we can see it says minus 23. So that's quite a big leap. So we'll listen to that. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, it sounds okay because it's not a particularly rhythmic or big track. So that sounds fine. But something to note that if we want to add in some extra keyframes, then normally two or three or four dB within the different jumps is normally enough without it feeling too overpowering. Now let's take another look at our intro, for example. Let's say that we want to, our music to turn up where our speaker isn't talking. So for example, a moment like this. So if we select this section and we click shift and then click on the track that we want to affect, that'll, that'll select the same range on our music track. And then if we press Apple 7 for the smart tool, and then we drag our music track up by a few dB, you'll see that it changes the volume specifically within that range. And now a nice little tip to smoothen that out, we'll press Apple 4 again, add another keyframe, add another keyframe, and alt click on these other keyframes to delete them. And now let's play that back. Create a play lab. What's your team's role in innovating? Like now that's a really cool handy tip to have in our music intros and outros, just for it to feel a little bit more radio-like. So I also want to show you guys a tip on how to edit music using shuffle mode and tap to transient. 
Let's go to the back end of our track for now. And we'll select our music track. Now, let's just hide these fades a second and play that track by itself. Okay, so at the moment the track starts on the B1, I actually only want those first two bars to repeat until the end of the podcast. So tab to transient allows us to find the peaks in the waveform naturally using just the tab key. So I'm going to select here and you can see it starts to skip through. For example, that's a beat. And that's a beat. But let's play it back, you'll see what I mean. Beat here, beat here. So I want to repeat the first few bars until the end of the podcast. So I'll select on my clip and I'll hit tap. And you'll see that the cursor automatically goes to that peak. I'll then cut that. And let's just play that clip now. And you see that's looping. So let's delete the end of that clip. And then we'll make sure in shuffle mode. So Alt 1, as you can see, it changes here as well. We'll select the clip and then we'll press Apple D and that'll just duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. And I just want to make sure that's a nice clean cut across all of those different duplications. So let's highlight all of the cuts and hit F and that'll just add a really instant quick fade to each of those to make sure it doesn't clip. Play back again. And now let's play it against the rest of the podcast the big success for me. We'll be rooting for it. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll probably add in a nice exponential fade here. We'll zoom in a little bit, add in some automation as the dialogue finishes. We'll consolidate our tracks, shift alt three. And then let's say we want five seconds at the end of the podcast. So we'll select here, cut, and then just add a nice exponential fade again and play that back as a whole. Test for me. We'll be rooting for it. Thank you. Thank you. So now that we've got our music and intros and outros placed, let's have a look at sound effects, for example. Pro Tools offers a thing called workspaces. So if we hit Alt I, this opens workspace window. And then we want to create our catalog. And the catalog is great because we can use different drive and different file locations to create a sound effects catalog. So we know that everything's in one place. It doesn't copy files, but it means that we as a user can search everything using the search tool here. And it's all in one place rather than having to search the entire computer and taking a long time to do so. So if we open up our volumes and for example, we'll go into our sound effects folder where we know that we've got a lot of our sound effects and we'll right click on that and select create catalog from selection. Click OK, and then we'll open Catalogs. And you'll see there that it's added all of the folders there. Moving forward, if we want to add in other folders from different drives, we just go in, select them, and drag them into here. Here's really cool because we know that if we want to search, for example, we want a hit, a really strong cinematic hit, we search hit. And this is great because it shows all the different file names, all the different durations, the waveforms, which is really helpful to find the right sound effect for us. So let's say we want to start our podcast off with a big bang. So let's add a few seconds to our timeline so we can make space for that effect. And let's say that we need seven seconds. So we'll shift click and get up to around here. And then we'll go into time operations, insert time. And we'll click OK. And you'll see everything in our timeline has been completely moved back by seven or so seconds. We'll close the window. Then we'll hit Alt J to go back to our workspace. Let's say that we want our whoosh hits here, which is about nine seconds long. We will add a new track. So shift Apple N. We'll go stereo. We'll create that and let's change the color of that as well. So that stands out. And then we'll open our workspace again. And we can quite literally drag this into our new track, which we can either drag to the beginning of the sequence or we can click Y, which will hit it straight back to the beginning of the sequence. And here we go. Let's play that back. Tom, you are heading up our creative. Okay, so everything's a little bit of a mess. There's a big gap here. We've got a transition underneath and then our dialogue starts. So let's tidy that up a little bit. So we'll select that and press Apple M to mute it. So let's say we want to close the gap. So we'll click on our ruler on the very top where we can see our time references. 
And let's say we want everything to start around here, just around the peak hits. So then let's click on time operations again, and we'll cut time this time. And we'll hit apply, and you see everything starts here. But what we need to be careful is when we make that cut, we're going to lose the tail end of that sound effect. So we'll drag out the back end of that again, so that naturally fades out as before. And let's add a natural fade to that as well. Let's play that back. Tom, you are heading up our Creative Play Lab. What's your team's role in innovating Lego Play? Thanks, Lauren. That's a great question. Fundament and that's a much cleaner start. Another thing to look at for sound effects within our podcast is to look at reverb. So we have here a transition that we want to use, for example, if we're in the middle of a conversation and the theme of the conversation changes. So let's just zoom in a little bit and we can see here a little bit better the discussion points. So what we're going to do, for example, let's say that the minute that our second voiceover finishes, the subject changes quite dramatically. Let's drag this transition across and zoom in a little bit. And let's make sure everything's the same size so we can get a better idea of what's going on. Go over to medium and let's move our transition track up next to the dialogue so we can see a little better. Entirely relevant to kids as they change over the years. Amazing. Tom, for, for a brand... Okay, so aside from the fact that the transition is a little long, let's delete that back end there. Let's say that we're happy with that as a section change, but we want to add some reverb to that sound effect. So let's open the mix window and we'll create a new bus with the reverb. So Apple Shift N to create a new track and we'll go to stereo for our stereo reverbs. Aux input this time will change the track name to reverb. Click create. And I'll stick that at the back end again, changing the color of that. Now let's change the input to that to say verb one. And our transition track was on the transition channel here. Now we need to send that post fade to our aux track. So again, send that to verb one. And this opens up the send channel. So we need to set that to zero. So we can either pull it up or we hit alt click and that'll set us to infinity. And this is the fader that will turn up or down depending on how much we want our sound effect to have reverb on it. From there, we'll insert a reverb track. And whatever reverb will do for now. And let's go back to our edit window and we'll listen to that in solo. Let's solo that. And you can't hear the reverb. So we want to make sure that whenever we solo this track, we can still hear the reverb tail that it's created. So we'll Apple click on the S and let's play that back again. And now you can hear the reverb tail. Let's play that back as a whole, unsoloing this. It changed over the years. Amazing. Tom for it. So a little loud, so let's play that back again. It changed over the years. Amazing. Tom. And as you can hear, the reverb just helps to smooth out that transition a little bit. As a tip, it's really rare that we're going to use reverb for our discussion. Normally, if we're ever going to use reverb, it's for an effect, something like we've just created. But generally, we want clean, dry audio, which we'll get into more detail in our next step.